that was Nostalgia by Segreras for the grade uh, for Trinity Syllabus for 2020. First of all, uh, there is, I think, a typo in the tempo indication. It says 52 beats per minute for crotchets. Now, that isn't the case. It's not that speed. Um, and if you listen to, I think, the official Trinity recording of this on YouTube, uh, the guitarist isn't playing at that speed either. So it's not going to be... It, it's, it's too slow. If we lose the melody, the kind of sense of direction. And it'll just drag on. It doesn't work. It could have been a typo that it meant minims at 52, so literally twice the speed of that. Um, that would sound like this. Two, three, four. You can see already that's too fast. You can play that speed, but I think that's too fast. Um, so I think throw that out the window. It's it's not right. Um, I would say, what was I playing that at? Um, about eighty, roughly around that level. Um, but you know, go by go by the music more than the metronome for this piece. It's very expressive. Uh, that's the first thing. Um, obviously, the important part here is melody projection. Melody with the A finger a lot of the time get used to playing with the A finger for the melody. I love it. Um, and it happens so much. We can't always use our index finger or middle finger. So get used to playing with the A finger on the melody. Um, and it's especially hard, I think, to project that melody note, not over a bass note, that's fine. That's fine. It's when we do, say, uh, the third beat of bar three, Trying to project the A finger over the index and middle. This is the thing that you can do. You can actually, even though you're plucking the fingers together, you can make one pluck stronger than the other. It's a very um, difficult motion to describe, and I think it's better off um, experimented with on your own. For me, a thing that helps is a slightly more uh, uh, less diagonal position on the guitar. I favour a kind of diagonal playing style. I have longer nails than normal. And that helps me. Um, but on when I'm trying to articulate the A finger more and play that above the rest of them, I do find a bit of a straighter hand like that can help. It also just brings out the frequency a bit more of the of the, the, the high the high frequencies which are more prevalent in the E string. So get used to, uh, this is a big thing in this, I think I think you, you could just play this chord round and round for a week or two every day, trying to project that melody and then trying the whole bar. These have to be quiet too, we, we talk about projecting the melody but what that means is bringing down the accompaniment as well. The bass note, the bass note can be loud. These, the, the second and third string, we have to bring them down. So practice going. See how loud you can get the A finger and how soft the index and middle. A uh, really nice progression there. I'm a sucker for this kind of chord. A flat nine chord, we call it. So we've got an E major chord there, which is taking us to A minor. And we go there via a flat nine. That F um, natural, it should be an F sharp if it was a normal nine over an E chord. It's an F natural. Um, a really big tension note. It brings us 
um, one of those delightful tritones, the um, augmented fourth, diminished fifth, that interval. Very, very tense, clashy. Enjoy that. I think most guitars tend to bring that out, get a bit gritty down by the bridge. All works. Um, don't panic at the quaver section and don't rush it. And um, yeah, it's got to feel, even though it does surge ahead, it does kind of push. It's got a push to it. Even there, I'm, you know, I'm pushing, but then bring, bring, giving it back. I'm pulling at the end of that. And slow and there. I quite like creating space around these chords. have to, you can make them more legato. Um, my personal preference sometimes is to... I don't know, I like the sound. Um, and one other big thing with a piece like this, a very expressive romantic piece, is be careful not to overindulge in any one note at the expense of the phrase. So we have this lovely melody. Um, don't pause too much. You can overindulge here. And then, you know. But the, the, the problem is, whilst, whilst we're kind of there enjoying too much one note, the phrase, the line of the phrase is broken and lost. And I always think we have to be careful as guitarists of playing music of this period and this intensity, not to hang around too much on any one note and enjoy it too much. You know, you could vibrate to that for ages. Oh yeah. But then we lose the phrase and it needs to carry on. Because that note is nothing without the next note, which is nothing without the next note. Again, in that phrase, there's tension. Um, it's leading actually to the F sharp on the next bar, which is in itself a tension. It's uh, an F sharp held over an E minor chord, the ninth or the, the second. It's not a stable note, and it resolves. Um, so just be careful that you don't enjoy one note too much, if that makes sense. And again here, don't be careful doing this kind of thing. Um, this overexpression. Like we can express but within these bounds of the melody. We're serving the melody. And it's all, every every phrase, the way I think of it is that every, every um, Every melody or every phrase has a a point that it's going towards, right? Um, so in this case, for from bar eight, it's all heading to that, right? At the end of at the start of bar ten. So that note is like a kind of black hole pulling everything into it. Everything comes. Um, because that note is coming. Everything happens here because of this thing here. So try to, to feel that pull towards the, this resolve here, that note. Here it's coming and there it is. And then everything, everything else comes out of that note too. This, then everything else has, has kind of born from that, that point. So we try and find in a phrase that that part that affects everything around it, like ripples in time or gravity. So Oh, another thing. Uh, hold on the D sharp. Perhaps. Maybe you don't. I do. Uh, that's the D sharp at the end of bar nine, because that's the one that's resolving to the E. It says it's only a quaver. Doesn't matter. Um, the reason why I say it doesn't matter 
is not we, composers don't always put in that a note should ring on or not. And if it's a quaver, it doesn't mean it should. It doesn't always have to just last for a quaver. Uh, case in point, right? No one's going to play this piece. Probably no one. I say the first bar, actually playing the bass note as a crotchet, like this. No one will, but it says it's a crotchet. We don't play it like a crotchet. We know not to. It's meant to be held on, right? It's legato. Um, and the same thing, I, can, I think it can happen later on. So that D sharp. is nice. Um, also later on, the same thing kind of thing happens. Uh, bar 19, you've got a descending bass line here. It's quite easy to miss. F sharp, E, D sharp, D, C, G, B, B, C, C sharp, D. Lovely. And then eventually, D, G. Um, let that line be heard. So there, you know, here it's you know, bar 23. Um, I prefer making that a minim. That bass note, lay it ring on until the C sharp. You don't have to. I prefer it. Um, at the same point in that section, make sure that the dotted minims, in bar 20 we have an E dotted minim. Uh, let that ring on, it's the melody. So the melody there. Um, it's often lost, so don't don't lose that. Thinking about um, gravitational pull of notes there as well. Obviously, the, the we're, we're going towards the E, but we're not going. It's bum 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 ba ya. So the E comes out of actually the the B before it, because it's the first beat the bar in the, in this case. So. La, 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 ya. Um, hope that helps. Anything else? Yeah, this this um, sforzando chord at the end of the piece is a tough one to get right. I think to place well. I don't think I did it particularly well in that recording. Um, so going from here, rest, rest. It doesn't say rip. Maybe we should. We, oh, I did there. It just it feels weird to me to have a chord that chord shut off with it, with rests around it, but we have to. So find a way to make that work. I think the sports end though we we're going from piano into piano, so it doesn't need to be hugely loud. Can't go. Doesn't work. Um, so it, it can be a bit above the rest, but not hugely. Rest. Rest. Maybe you can. Uh, maybe you know. Part of, of a Swartz Ando is to make it stick out for everything around it. So maybe you could uh, make that more. Pont. Keep the level down. But yeah, it's a tricky one. That I, I don't know how to make that sound great, to be honest. Um, if I find a way, I'll let you know. Uh, lastly, I just to throw it out there. I don't 
wouldn't necessarily say do this, but the first two bars of the piece are normally played here. Probably the first finger on the E, open G and B, and then we shift up. And that's fine. It works really well. Absolutely no problem there. Um, obviously, don't don't let this happen. That squeak. Try to not do that if you're doing it down here. I was playing it E on the fifth string, seventh fret. G on the fourth string, fourth, fifth fret. And then open B. A bit of a hard spacing for the right hand, especially if you're using I, M, and A. Um, but that chord voicing, rather than that means that I can get a fourth finger ready. I'm not, I'm not stressing about it, it's there. I also quite like the sound of the G, especially with these new strings, with a bit more kind of metallic sound to it compared to there. And that note is important, it's the third of the chord here. La, la, la. I think it's actually the saddest note of those three. So having that ring out, Hope that helps and enjoy this piece. Thank you.